Welcome back, Five Aces. Battle control initialized. Hey, hey, people, Five Aces here. Welcome to a live feed into uh, the field hospital that is my family at the present time. We've, uh, for the past four weeks, we've had three different strains of illnesses. So there was really riveting stuff. My kids have been sick and out of it for three out of four weeks. We've had in rapid succession, rapid fire. <laughs> First, uh, scarlet fever. Then we had hand, mouth, foot disease. And now we're having just a regular old uh, stomach infection. So absolutely amazing. And that's why I was kind of uh, absent for the past week or so. There was simply no time between kids screaming and kids yelling and kids uh, just projecting their vomit pretty much everywhere. Yeah, that was kind of a thing. But we're back on track. The kids are also back to being healthy, fortunately. If I were in the United States, I would probably have to declare, declare medical bankruptcy at that point. But fortunately, I, uh, <laughs> I'm medically privileged, I guess. And with that out of the way, I think it might actually be time for a career change. I'm going to become an engineer and capture a hospital IRL, just so I don't have to get there every single time. Yeah, it was rough, but we're back on track. And I've also been super busy job-wise with the equivalent, so the Austrian equivalent of the SATs where we had some really riveting prompts that I had to uh, that I had to basically give to the students such as uh, such as interpret this very um, this 17th century poem absolutely fantastic and the results were absolutely stunning as well because some people yeah interpreted this as, as yeah this is probably present day and I think uh, I think he's talking about the metro line was one of the uh, one of the assessments I got from the students. Interesting stuff. Anyway, we are back in open array now, and I'm really happy. I haven't been there for a while, but now we're going to introduce a player who has been tearing up the competitive scene and is actually a newcomer from the looks of it. It is in the top left spawning as a beautiful purple, I like that color scheme, Mr. Creo. And he, uh, oops, forum name is uh, also Creo. And he's tangling with Yunano, aka Maceman, the Maceman, the Menace. The map here in question is Duskwood version 2. We haven't actually glossed over the entire map pool just yet, but we might do so in the future. So both players going for a standard double refinery opener into War Factory, into a... Oh, there is an APC for Creo and just another Harvester for Yunano. So Yunano not opting for a light vehicle just yet. He has captured his comm center, so it gives him a little flank protection. Ooh. Okay, the comm center from Creo has not yet been taken because the engineer was sniped indeed. Yeah. Oh no, never mind, there he is. He took the top right Derek, so opting for the economic route. And just purchasing an APC to transport the, the engineer around safely. That's a very prudent strategy. Oh, Yunano has built an expansion at the refinery. I think that's a really good call on this map because this is a gem mine. And the gem growth is inhibited by those little specks of ore because gem can't, can't supersede ore, basically. So what happens is the sooner you shovel this free, the sooner you'll get uh, access to, to the full gem potential. And that is just a really good call. I like that. That approach, yeah, Kray is doing the same, so this is probably just stock standard for that map at that point. But still nice to highlight. Yeah, and it gives you like 750 instead of 500. Who wouldn't like to take that deal? You Nano's cheeky rifle here, just waiting in ambush. <laughs> nice attempt. Good hustle. Actually, funnily enough, it's been so long that I cast it, it's almost two weeks ago, that there is literal cobwebs on my webcam. <laughs> It's a cob webcam, webcam for the time being. Okay, another rifle scout gets uh, gets demolished. And we're seeing the first heavy tank out for Creo, so heavy before MCV. That is more of an aggressive build. Let's go for the MCV now. There is an APC, oh, APC flag track combo for Yunano. I'm not sure if that's the right call here, but Yunano is definitely a player who can stand his own, stand his ground. 
And with a mobile flag, armored personal carrier combo, you've... Ooh, double APC. Now we're cooking. He's going for a base bust. Really risky, because you really have to nail the timing window, and you also need to guess right on which expansion your opponent is going to take. I think on this map, it's kind of a gamble. You've got two equally uh, equally or rich uh, expansion slots. We both have, I think... No, you know what? This one is actually closer. So there is a higher likelihood that, the, that your opponent is going to take their close expansion, obviously. And in this case, that would just be on the right hand and left hand side, respectively. <laughs> and the southern expansions are probably going to be taken afterwards. The first clash is about to happen, and if the APCs don't dem die immediately, then I'm actually seeing an advantage in army come for you Nano, because he's got a beefier frontline with three APCs. Should definitely patch those two up, because they are just a scratch away from dying, from exploding. Okay, Yunana has captured the uh, Derek on the top right back, but Kreo has, sn has snuck away from the one on the bottom left. So again, we're on even footing. Oh, this is gonna get revealed. Never fight into uh, the line of sight of a comm center. Bad call. <laughs> you can poke the flame tower from outside the range. It's not really gonna amount to anything. I don't like this engagement for Yunano at all. He's fighting into a base now. His front lines have not arrived on time. There is masses of flame towers. Wait, Kray is just sending... What is going on? Good crushes though from the APCs. Now, let's see. Can the tanks reciprocate? They certainly can. What an overforce from Yunano. Oh, nasty. What was that from both players, by the way? Kreo had such a nice defensive position, and instead he just pushed in. He lost a lot more than he should have, but ultimately, there was not enough firepower for Yunano to bust through the tank lines in time. They were able to disrupt uh, the infantry long enough that the that Kreo's infantry was able to clean shop. Yeah, bad placement, bad... <laughs> Weird all-around engagement, just gotta have to put it out there. And now, as a result, Yunano's getting pushed back a little. Kreo is going aggressive. Uh, thinking twice about it. Would have been a really good crush angle. Oh, barely not the right crush angle for now. Oh, better. Better, better. Flag trucks are really good on the chase. This would be the time to go on the chase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. The more rockets you can snipe out of this composition, the better for you. Heavy tank overstaying a little. Ooh, Zooks are gonna track. Yep. But there is no more beefy frontline. You nano, why do you keep overforcing like this? There is also radar tech out for Kreo already. So it's in a pretty good uh, pretty good position. Uh, counter radar for you nano though. Haven't mentioned it, but it's a Russia versus Ukraine almost mirror match, so Soviet brothers in arms conflict. Okay, um, the radar dome positioning from Kreo on the forward command is a bit risky, but that's fine for the time being, it's not really under threat. Oh, and Yunano's built his service depot here. He has also lost the harvester bottom left, just to a random straggler army, just a heavy tank and a couple of rockets. Hmm. Down goes the comm center. Yunano knows he's under pressure. Tech set her out for him. He's Ukraine, so that must be maybe a demo Hail Mary. I don't know what the idea here is. Kreo is just going for a yak. And some scouting is gonna is gonna go a long way in this game. 13k and 19k army value respectively. Yeah, Yunano has made some questionable decisions in this game. Gonna have to just call him out there a little. I usually I usually know him as a very uh, solid player who knows what he's doing and when to take engagements and when to retreat. This has not been one of those games. This has just been a, a game of let's throw let's throw our feces at each other and just see what happens. Uh, Kreo is being intercepted here, a really good V2 placement. So the yep, infantry is being obliterated. Oh, don't sack your V2 like this. No attack move on your V2, my friend. That is not how you use them. Oh, the Harvester. Really unfortunate timing. Down goes the Service Depot. Down goes the FCOM. 
That is a big deal. Oh, are the yaks empty? No, not yet. Ooh, good snipes, but that did cost him... That did cost him the fourth command. There's also little specks of the base getting cleaned up. The tech center has been scouted. Yeah. This tech center, whatever he's producing right now, it ain't gonna come out. Wait, he's not even producing anything from the tech center. Oh! That was just 1,500 in dead investments. That was like... That was like... Oh, he built the iron curtain. Okay. I thought he would he would have gone full crypto, bro. And just, uh... Just trust me, bro. I'm investing into, into BitConnect! But, oh. Uh, it was him just purchasing an iron curtain. That is a very solid investment. I'm gonna be honest here. Yeah, I'm not sure, though. This is not... This is looking a bit bleak for Yonano, despite him cleaning up this army. Meta Yonano is the strongest version, yeah. Yeah, I gotta say. When he's playing standard, he's <laughs> performing a lot better than when he's trying to cheese it out. Oh, he is getting tackled. He's getting pincered. But the defensive lines should be enough to hold for a little bit at least. Are they? Yeah, should be. That is just a little bit of infantry left. He did... Hmm did lose another harvester here. Three harvesters left? Yeah. It's looking a bit problematic. Flag truck takes down the first yuck. Okay, eco count. Time for an eco count. Three under nine. He's got the iron curtain advantage, but is that enough? Also, there is no power for the iron curtain. Not often is the only yaks kill harvesters. You would be surprised. Yaks do have an insane amount of burst damage, even against armored targets. If they uh, unload their full salvo, it actually does a lot of damage to armored units. No joke. No kidding. Man, the fact that this here... A little whiff. Oh, the V2 micro. V2 versus V2 hits. Good hustle. Nice try on the old track. But ultimately we didn't find a connection here. Yeah, the problem is going to be that he's going to be outscaled hard. There is, he's lost his refinery, plus he can't rebuild it easily. Because he only has one conyard left, so... He is in emergency rebuild mode. At least kill one of the barracks. I think the APC does not have anything in it, yeah. There is now a tech center for Creo. And Creo has the better game-ending tech, uh, as... Ukraine gets a lot of free stuff with the parabombing run. Plus, uh, the demo truck is just a, a nice game changer, you know, just a, something to turn the tide. But in terms of being ahead and ending the game, obviously Tesla tanks and Tesla troopers are better at doing that. So, basically if you're playing from behind, if you're playing for the long game and for value, then it's probably Ukraine you want. But if you're playing from ahead and just want to get some really good and good value for your trades, then uh, Russia is your pick. Uh, no attack move. Uh, or no, no force fire here. Iron Curtain is ready, so not half bad. Please don't waste it. We've seen so many wasted Iron Curtains lately. I've gotta say, the past couple Iron Curtain runs that we've seen have been really unsatisfying. Good lord. Good lord, the Yak Flock is coming for the rest of your army. He's losing a couple of Yaks here and there. It doesn't matter. He's got so many more where that one came from. Look at that gem field. That is cash money. All money that is not flowing into the into the pockets of Mr. Yonano. Who is now finding himself woefully behind. Cash zero. Income welfare. No MasterCard's approval. MasterCard approval pending. Earnings graph trending downwards. Yeah, game number one. A bit rough. I've heard a para drop. Wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to spot it. Oh, there it is. There's the counter para drop. Oh, this one has been a lot more successful. Man, you nano. Losing a harvester to a random para drop at this stage of the game is just devastating. And please don't also lose your refinery. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> That would have been absolute, absolutely devastating blow. Long distance mining on the gems. Yeah, there he goes. Iron Curtain is ready at least, so he can save off one more push, I'd say. 
<clears throat> I've heard some Tesla zaps. Oh, the power bombs are gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. Solid power bomb run. Even did a number on the mammoth tank. But Iron Curtain had actually been fired without me noticing. Just goes to show, Casta's curse. Completely missed it. I did not hear the sound effect, by the way. Did anybody else catch that? Or was it just unpowered for so long that it wasn't ready? I'm not entirely certain here. Tesla troopers in the back, they're actually doing a number on the infantry, but they're getting cleaned up. Man, there is just no more econ left. Nothing. Nothing at all left for Yunana. It's all over but the cry. Mammoth tanks are gonna self-heal. They are gonna provide value for free. Money for nothing and chicks for free. Refinery going down, harvester going down, and the Yak Flock is still unpunished. This is the last moments of Yunano in game number one. We're probably gonna see game number two very, very momentarily. Castle Troopers providing some good value here. They're decent if you mix them in into regular infantry just as sniper units. Basically, see them as sniper units. Shooting from the back lines and having a beefy front line of infantry that they can rely on for tanking. All right, that's it for game one. And uh, after a really questionable start from both players, we've arrived at a pretty good game. Late game Soviet versus Soviet mirror. All right, time for game two. Battle control terminated. Battle control initialized. And here we are on Taiga Vortex. This is a very, very interesting color scheme. You know what that reminds me of? Have you ever paused the game after a chrono shift? That is exactly how it looks like. All the colors are kind of washed out, looks kind of grayish. But I get what they were going for. It looks like, you know, the you know the taiga is a kind of this dull, drab, monotonous, colorless uh, type of woodland. Dog opener for Kreo, who has got opted for the Russians yet again. So either a Russia fanboy or, I mean, not in real life, just in open array. Because be, doing that in real life is uh, not advisable, to put it mildly. Not right now. Not with this madman at the helm. Alright, so FCOM is uh, very exposed here. And I'm not sure what the idea behind this is. Camping with the attack dog onto the FCOM. Wow. A bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. <clears throat> he is stutter stepping. Yunano is microing against it. He's just concentrating his forces up north. And this is unrevealed as of yet, so he's probably trying trying and cut into the reinforcements. I'm not sure if that's the best idea, but he's getting us around at least, and the dog dies. So he should have numerical superiority, still getting pushed back. But still without the dog. Force fire, good hustle. <clears throat> this is such tense micro here. Man, Kreo winning out big time with the dog. And then the force fire, oh no, he's gonna hose down the FCOM. Already. That is a terrible disadvantage here. So let's see how that looks in terms of yeah, he's killed twice as many rifles as Yunano has. Even with the loss of the dog. War Factory, second for both players. Kray is a bit behind. Did he go for an extra power plant, maybe? Man, that is gonna be a devastating blow. You know what? I take that back. On this map, this is actually not the biggest deal. Okay, he's getting cleaned up now. Didn't kill the FCOM. Alright. The model looks cool. The destroyed FCOM model looks really good. Even the Soviet star has fallen down. This looks like <laughs> like real life rural Russia. If you've ever been there, Yekaterinburg, Chelyabinsk Oblast, you know, uh, th that area over there, the former industrial Soviet Rust Belt. That is, uh, you see lots of those buildings <laughs> scattered across the, the lands, the badlands. Okay, flag truck again. We're gonna do away with the caster Omnivision and go into player vision. So Creo built a second power plant. I think that's why it was delayed by a little. Uh, what is that? That flag truck is going for a little run by. What? What are you doing? You nano. You are better than this. I swear. 
That was just a donation. Just opening up the donation box and <laughs> opening up the checkbook and saying, yeah, here's a 600 for a Mr. What's your name? Creo? All right, right. How do you spell that? Yeah, yeah. Let's just write the check. You can cash in any time. Ooh, that was rough. Losing your early scouting vehicle for zero reason whatsoever. And you had two chances at retaining it. First, just, you know, just a casual drive-by into the army and then being like, hey, that was fun. Let's scratch some more paint off that, that vehicle. Yeah, interesting choice. But four harvesters. No, oh, five harvesters. That's a super eco-boom strategy. And Creo has made the classic five aces mistake of rally pointing everything to the front lines. Yeah, it's a good parking spot for the ore truck, you know, just doing some scouting. Doing his duty. Doing his part in the war effort. I wonder if the harvesters are actually secretly like a penal battalion or something that is forced to be there. And this harvester guy is like, they're never gonna find out. They're never gonna find out, trust me. Trust me, I, I got this. Man, Grey are getting away with with the oil derrick heist. That's good as well. That was a really entertaining game. It, a lot of blunders, but still very entertaining. Yep, Harvester got sent back. The penal colony. I was not too happy about that. He's got the expansion out plus double barracks, so relatively stock standard. Yunano, on the other hand, has not used a rally point. Instead, he's just rally pointing everything to the default. And a little snipe on the oil derrick. Whoa, that explosion was a lot bigger than usual. Is that custom coded or was that just a visual? Huh. Interesting. He's now going for a little backstab. I think it's. Oh, it's not gonna get spotted. This could prove devastating. This could easily find an ore truck. Okay, he's going for the oil derrick, which is um, basically a safe play. You know you're gonna be able to snipe it, but your army is probably never gonna get out of there alive. So you're sacking your army for a stab at the oil derrick. It's okay. Maybe the better option would be to go to go to the harvester first, and if the harvester retreats or gets killed, then you move north because then your opponent doesn't have time to react. You kill off basically two birds with one stone. Would be my train of thought doesn't work the other way around because he would then have to retreat into the army. Hopefully Yonano did notice that uh, little scout going down because they're knocking at your front door my friend. He has deployed his Conair up south and he has zero prep for the time being. Yeah, go chase him. Alright. Oh no. Oh no. Yunano's moving back. That is bad news. Krayo's already in position. Just waiting for the go signal. Oh, he's doing the same as Happy usually does. Just pulling him apart. He is waiting for the triple prong. He's setting up all his forces on three key locations. Killing off the FCOM first. That's okay. The FCOM itself wasn't a big deal here. That's the big deal though. That's the big ticket item. That is gonna be an ore refinery down. That is gonna be two harvesters down. And mining disrupted. On this side at least, Yunana was wise to it and did send the harvester away. So that's not too bad. And there is an engineer as well. Trying its best to capture the service depot. So it was a quadruple prong. And cool stuff. Cool stuff from Creo. Some good multitasking here. And especially the setup is so nice to watch. It's a bit, a bit like chess. Where if you're if you're an amateur, you can watch it and you'd be like, oh yeah, okay, uh, they're doing something. If you're someone who knows a little bit more in depth about this, uh, about the game, you'll be able to understand the setup as well. Not just the executions, like how did they do it, but oh, that's how they did it. I always like getting to that point of understanding. Oh no. The setup. Speaking of the payoff. Oh, and Creo also got the oil derrick in the back lines of Yunano. That is just brutal. Oh, he's being pummeled this game. Yunano is not able to catch a break here. Third harvester down. 
Yikes. And zero signs of counter-aggression. He has not yet done anything uh, to Creo, who is now on his third base and can easily take his fourth as well. This has just been obliteration from start to finish. Yeah, the spectators are disconnecting. That is a surefire sign that there's either lag or the game is in the process of being of wrapping up. That is exactly how it looks right now. Man, he would need a miracle to come back from this one. Harvesters are doing their best at tanking and they're not very good. Not doing a good job at it. On the southern front, okay. Here he can easily snipe the, uh, those units because there is no front line, so they don't have the line of sight to fight this even. So he can actually trade up in value, but does it really matter? You've lost so much. Is he on one base? Yeah, he's on two bases, but he's lost a refinery, three harvesters, mining is blocked from the husk here, another harvester on a strike, there is tech out for Creo. What are your options? It's not looking very hot. <clears throat> okay, let's let's take a quick tally here. Uh, it's just a 7k lead for now. Good yak strafe. Gets at least something back. Oh, so that was barrels in front of the Olderic that blew up. So gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's actually less less behind than it looks like, but it's still more than enough to finish the game. Man, seven harvesters on the six. Good hit on the V2. Really, really solid hit here. And in comes the army. Yunana trying for some hit and run, trying to, to hide his army, but realistically, you don't have an out, my friend. It's only gonna get worse. Is Kreo going for more Econ, or is he going for tech? This would be classic tech timing. I've repelled two pushes, I have killed five harvesters. Time to tech. When you're ahead, try to get more ahead. That is the classic uh, strategy game Kredo. Poking at all the flame towers, but leaving them all sort of alive. Fcom's still alive. Mm. Maybe can find a good angle into this, but I highly doubt it. Flame towers are starting to appear. Look at the number that they're doing on the tanks, by the way. Flame tower damage as well as yak damage, by the way. So, whoa, that was a good strafe. Yeah, look at the damage they do even to armored units. As stated previously, yak damage is not a joke. If they're able to unleash their full potential, rat -tat, tat they just eat tanks for breakfast. Ooh, this could be a good one. And nope. Nope, it isn't, because Kray spotted it with the Yaks and sent the Harvesters away preemptively. That's gonna be a dead refinery, but he can easily relocate to the south for now, and then rebuild from there. Oh, or never mind, you know, just casually build a refinery into your opponent's face. That's also fine. That must be custom though. Did you see that explosion again? That was just an area of effect explosion. It's a lot more impressive than it had any right to be. Flag truck back tech. Ah, he didn't lose his service depot, so curious about the flag truck choice. Was he maybe scared of an overwhelming yak flock? No, not like this. You're supposed to counter the yak, not the other way around. Yaks OP? No, they are not. They are very strong at what they do, but they're the the definition of a glass cannon. Yak damage is insane, but Yak survivability is about that of a of a shrimp on a hot day in a, in Arizona, I guess. Not too long. Not too long for this world. Okay, a little push onto the main base. The Yaks are going to be able to respond. Nope. Out of ammo for now. And in comes the cavalry. Yeah, Kreo just has an answer for just about anything. He's about to win this engagement as well. And as a result, 
he is probably gonna take the 2-0 from here. He's also building a tech center now, a bit later than I would have, but definitely Kreo seems to be a player who knows what he's doing, what they're doing, you know, maybe. We've had a couple female players, um, even though RTS are probably typically a relatively male-dominated field. And there's some super interesting stuff on that regarding, uh, regarding you know, social expectations, but also, um, but also the the fact that uh, testosterone leads to more comp uh, competitiveness. So it's not fully explored from what I understand, but it is a an interesting topic. But having more female players as well would be cool. Just you know, having a broader community in general, just a, a larger community overall would be a good thing. And I remember we had Sara Sicaria uh, a while back. I don't know if she's still active. Casted some of her games. Oh man, you Nano, my friend. You are being out pressured and you are being shot out of the sky by the Yux. This is, this is not representative of the full season because you Nano, I think, had a pretty good run. But man, for now it's looking a bit tough. Just saying. Another Harvester lost. Uh, economy 10 over 5, yeah. And the Army Graph, he's down. Earnings are flatlining. He's managed to, held, to hold on for a little. But ultimately it's going to be in vain. Because there is going to be... The Soviet Tesla Quail Push. Ooh. Tesla Quail Push is so nice. Ah, perfect placement. Just in range of the Flame Towers and also just in range of the Orb Patch. They do have enough vision, I believe. Yeah. The vision is sufficient to even cover the Orb Mine here. So, Craig, look at his map vision. He sees everything. Okay, he lost one Harvester here. Not the end of the world. Ooh, nice prediction. No, wait, that was an attack move. <laughs> Mammoth tanks is standing guard as well. Yep, committing to the ore refinery here. GG, well played. Well played indeed. Kreo with a very, very solid uh, game number one and two. That was n Those were not his first games of the season, and I, I, I assume he has been practicing on the ladder. Those were fun games indeed. Dang shot, by the way, also. I'm also going to have to cast all of his games as well. So, is he playing? But well, Kav is playing anyway, and I've got plenty of replays from Kav. Got to check the dank shot uh, replay folder. Maybe I've got some of him as well. Hopefully so, because we're back on track. The kids are back to being healthy, and uh, I'm about to capture a hospital. So wish me luck getting my engineer's degree now and just getting a, a wrench in the, in the briefcase, so I can basically take over the the healthcare system by myself and. Uh, Supply my kids with all the meds that they need for the time being, all the antibiotics, until all the germs become antibiotic resistant. Yeah, thank you for watching, it's been a ton of fun getting back into the thick of it. Let's hope the pace is gonna pick up. Where I stand, I stand hopeful. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Five aces, out. Battle control terminated.